now we have the clear evidence that an embryo which is frozen thawed produced in a test tube can uh, produce new life and uh, that is what we want for the northern white rhinos <laughs> We assess uh, the reproductive health of each individual so that we uh, can have a better idea how the outcome of our intervention will be. So it is a very complex program and we are very, very happy that uh, we have now achieved this milestone. Before it was uh, oocyte collection in the rhinoceros itself, uh, because we, uh, it is a very challenging procedure to harvest oocytes from a two-ton individual. Then the next step which we achieved was producing out of these oocytes in a test tube, the first embryos. And now we can show even if the embryos are frozen and kept in liquid nitrogen for several years, we saw them and they, they are capable to produce new life. Only surrogates. The baby will be raised uh, milk-wise by lactation from the southern white rhino, but it will spend most of the time that is our plan with the northern white rhino, so to learn how to be a northern white rhino, because that is a really important element of surviving in the landscape of Central Africa. Uh, because a southern white rhino lives in the savanna, which is a completely different habitat than what the northern white rhinos actually do. Wonder. The last North about Rhino, you have to remember, was born in 2000. That was the last little baby which hit the ground from this subspecies. So we, we had a gap of more than yeah, more than 20 years, but with this new technology, we see that we have a really fair chance to achieve this, the first pregnancy of this uh, magnificent species in this year, but uh, the pregnancy length of a rhino takes 16 months. So it's a long journey for the baby. Uh, however, uh, that uh, brings us to, to the birth in early 2026. And then uh, from there, we will have many more rhinos because we have already 30 embryos, pure northern white rhino embryos, which are all waiting for being transferred. And then uh, when the baby, first babies are born, we're working on the genetic variation with the stem cell technology, where we use uh, skin cells from deceased animals to provide more genes for the population. It can be used as a blueprint for other critical endangered like the uh, Sumatran rhino. However, we should keep really in mind it is a very expensive and very complicated process. And it should be not a blank card for bad decision makers uh, so that they are irresponsible with the natural resources of our planet. We want to fix mistakes, errors from the past, but we want not provide a new toolbox for making future bad decisions. Okay. Now we are 
that we have we have 30 southern white rhino in Opejeta. We have three northern white rhino in Opejeta also. <laughs> Die wir so vorbereiten, dass es irgendwann mal in 100, 200 Jahren auch für das Land wie Kenia eine Bereicherung wieder sein wird, wenn man diese. Aus der Dringlichkeit der Arterhaltung in den Vordergrund ihrer Arbeit gestellt. This is our baby. Thank you very much, and we will continue with the presentation over these fetus, early fetus. You can see it here on the picture on the side, uh, and to make sure that it's really. <laughs> Yeah, really important moment, and um, I'm really emotionally um, shaked up. Uh, I came yesterday from uh, Australia, had not much sleep, um, but um, I think we achieved together, and that's really important. Not my person, not another person. We achieved together uh, something which was uh, not believed to be possible. I think uh, the biorescue Rescue Consortium uh, worked uh, so hard and so effective together with all our partners uh, that uh, we really made the impossible possible. And um, today we can uh, report that, and that is really a milestone to allow us to produce northern white rhino calves in the next two, two and a half years. <laughs> Um, as I stand here, I'm really uh, proud to say that hosting the last two known to exist northern white rhinos is a huge responsibility. And it reminds us every morning that if nothing is done, then we are facing extinction. We see it live every morning. When we look at the two females that, uh, that are currently held within central parts of the, of the conservancy, it speaks to us. And it is for that reason that we are committed, both at management, national level, the government of Kenya, uh, that we do whatever it takes, whatever humanly possible, to make sure that these animals do not uh, disappear from the face of the earth. And my colleague Britta is here from the embassy to help you. And for the first time, we really have the chance to save the northern white rhino from extinction. The recipe for our success, as you know, is a Kenyan habitat. The Kenyan experts and great international partners. So here we jointly contributed to develop a new conservation research approach, which has the potential to be applied to other highly endangered wildlife species, not just the rhinos, to secure optimal biodiversity and healthy habits on a global scale. Yeah, uh, right now emotional is quite a kind of roller coaster because it's a sweet bitter symphony. Uh, we we actually achieved what we worked for for years, and we are extremely happy about that. But we have to say that we lost two rhinos on that way, which were not uh, expected. And uh, El Nino and the release of these the deadly bacteria, nobody has seen that before. So we built a completely new enclosure uh, to uh, avoid this accident again. So they live now, they see our rhinos live on a completely different area where these mudslides can't occur. 